Hello everyone! I hope you're starting to feel festive. I love this time of the year. On this episode, we're going to have a special guest. Have you noticed over the past few years pictures and videos contributed by Susan Rog here? Do you remember her pineapple piece? Well, Susan is an avid gardener, chef, an avid bird watcher, of course, and she's an artist. She's painted a few pictures of birds for me and I absolutely love her style. I find it really unique. And since our next month's photo contest is going to be a bird inspired art, I thought we'd invite Susan on the show and learn more about her art. Let's give her a call. Hello. Oh, hi, Sue. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Awesome. How are birds in Florida? They are happy as clams and they've got full bellies this wonderful sunny afternoon. Oh, lucky you. <laughs> yes, we're being swamped by goldfinches, so you know, I'm quite happy as well. My feeders are very busy. Oh, I bet. I can't wait for them to get here. I'm ready with my Brom finch feeder there. Uh... It's all ready for them to come my direction. Awesome. So I wanted to share your art with our uh, audience. I wanted to um, I have a few questions because I absolutely love your style. So, you know, what came first, painting or birds or everything at the same time? Well, I've been an artist as a child and also an avid animal lover, as most British people are. We love our animals and nature. So I guess they both came together and of course it just goes hand in hand that as a bird lover that I am, that I want to paint them. Why not? And you know, I've seen, you, you, I mean, you paint just about anything, you know, but you have a very unique style. How did you come up with that? I'm a detailist and when I look at a photograph, I search for detail. And the more detail that you paint or draw, the more you can capture on the paper and the better the art piece comes out, basically. So I tend to do most of my work in ink first. It's Japanese ink, and then I watercolor it in. So it's watercolor that you use the most in your paintings? As of uh, right now, I was doing a lot of watercolor, and recently I've just switched to gouache, which oh. is kind of like if... Um, if acrylic married watercolor, okay. its baby would be gouache. <laughs> wow. And, you know, like, I, here I'm holding the, the painting that you did for me of the gray catbird. And I've seen the, the picture of it, but the background doesn't look like anything. It's, it's so different. It's so pretty. How did you do that? Oh, thank you. Well, the paper it's on is actually it's from France. It's a watercolor paper. And basically, to create that background... I wet the background quite severely, and it's cotton, 100% cotton is the paper, so it absorbs water really easily. Okay. And then I select, you know, multiple color paints and just drop them on, hope for the best, because <laughs> it all merges together, and then I take salt. The secret is salt, and if you take a grinder or even if you take a pinch of salt and sprinkle it on, it creates that effect where it absorbs into the water and it makes a beautiful pattern. And that's how I was able to accomplish that. So you, you do the background first and then you paint the birds later when it's all dry? Um, that would be the artist's preference. You could do it either which way. It makes no difference. And in this case, I actually did the ink work of the bird first. I used what's called a masking fluid which prevents the wetness getting all over the bird. And it's kind of like a glue that goes all around the edges of the bird where I don't want the paint to travel. Mm -hmm. And then once it's dried, once I've got the background in and it's dried, then I can remove that gluey masking fluid. It just peels right off. Okay, I see. So how long does it take you? I mean, this, this looks so complicated and sophisticated to me because I don't draw or paint. So like this cardboard that I'm holding in my hands, how long did it take you? Like, how did it all, how does it all start? Can you tell me more about I it? I think, uh, sure, sure. I would say a piece that size, that was a five by seven from memory. Mm -hmm. And that would take about four hours, approximately four hours. I mean, of course, depending on how big I'm going on a piece and depending on what medium I'm using okay. can take you know, longer. I mean, I've got pieces that have taken me 40 hours to create. Right. Um, so it can range. It ranges in, in time frame. Okay. Um, and then, 
you do birds and what other uh, animals do you do you prefer a specific you know um category to paint or it's all the same to you just as long as you're painting well i love animals i love animals they're near and dear to my heart so there's not any you know any animal that i can't paint i recently did some koi fish uh, but right now i'm venturing out onto some different things just to shake it up a little so i'm doing bands i'm doing a kimono right now yes um I've done grapes and fruits and i'm not a huge fan of still life you know which would be like a vase with mm -hmm. an apple sitting next to it that doesn't uh work for me i like drama so if there's an elephant charging or something like that, I like action, you know, in mm -hmm. most of my pictures that I paint. And I do a lot of the photography, of course, myself. Uh, and I'm lucky to have access to, you know, a lot of pho photographs that I've taken over the years. That's right. Yes, yeah, so I mean, you've traveled quite a bit. Yeah, I've covered 60 countries and I've got 110,000 pictures to choose from. So I'm quite lucky that whatever I'm looking for, I generally find. Lots that. of lots of inspiration. So mm -hmm. do you have any maybe tips and tricks? You know, I mean, is can is painting for anyone? You know, you always hear, you know, anyone can paint. And, you know, I'm, of course, kind of afraid because I don't have the natural talent. But is there anything that you maybe can recommend? <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. The very first thing I would say to a beginner, don't compare your artwork to someone else. A lot of people say, oh, I can only paint stick men. Well, personally, I've seen some great stick men. <laughs> so never compare yourself to anyone else. There's always going to be someone that can paint better than you and someone that's worse than you. No different than somebody's prettier than you or someone's not as pretty as you. So you have to uh, accomplish the best you personally can and be happy with that and you will progress just like in anything we do whether it be gardening whether it be learning to drive mm -hmm. the more time you put in the more hours you put in the better you will become and mm -hmm. just have patience with it and have fun and don't beat yourself up on it that it didn't come out right That's trust right. me i've got many a piece mm -hmm. that just gets filed away that i personally never want to see again mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i say run with it go with it it's a lot of fun it's therapeutic it's good for your mind, it's good for your body, and it's good for your soul. Absolutely. So, and what about tools? Like, can you recommend someone who doesn't know anything about it, what would be uh, types of paints or types of brushes? What, what's, what's to start with? Sure. There's many beginner sets. I would recommend someone go to their local art supply store. Okay. And generally, generally in these kind of stores, there's artists. That's where they gravitate to work. So they're knowledgeable on products, mm -hmm. whether it be graphite, whether it be charcoal, paint. And just tell them, you know, be upfront. Hey, I'm a beginner. What do you recommend? A nice beginner set, a beginner set of brushes, and what kind of paper do you recommend for this certain medium? Okay. And they'll guide you, you know, and you're not investing a lot of money up front. You don't want to buy the highest and the best product, but you might not like that particular. You may not find that you want to paint. You may right. later find out you can do colored pencils. So mm -hmm. they'll guide you to a nice beginner set. It's very affordable. And uh, I would recommend start right there. And, and you know, sky's the limit on Google. There's many free classes That's or even right. in your local neighborhood. Yeah. There's always uh, instructors in your local neighborhood teaching affordable classes. So take some of the beginner classes and, and just learn the basics. There's some very basics that once you've got the basics, everything else follows after that. Just like everything else. It does, yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much. Is there anything else that you can inspire us with? I would say fill your bird feeders, <laughs> grab a cup of coffee, sit out there one morning, take some time out for you, which we often forget to do. We're so busy in our day with our families and chores and you know things that we have to do just take 10 minutes out of your day sit outside on your porch in your backyard relax grab your camera and snap some pictures and if those pictures of those birds don't inspire you i don't know what would <laughs> that's true <laughs> yes well thank you so much sue if you guys are on facebook susan has uh, uh, all her pictures pa uh, posted on her facebook page so check it out I'll post it in our email as well. Thank you, Sue. And uh, are you painting today? I sure am. I'm yeah. finishing my Komodo lady. Oh, so well, 
very colorful. So oh. I'll, I'll share it with you later. Absolutely. Oh, thank you so much. Well, I'll check it out on your Facebook page. Awesome. Thank right. you. You have a great day. Thank you. You too. Enjoy the birds and painting. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Today, we have a question from Barry Tricalo. He's heard somewhere that the brown skin on peanuts can choke blue jays. Is that a possibility? Hi, Barry. This is a new one on me. I do occasionally get questions from folks wondering whether birds can choke on sticky peanut butter, and my answer is always the same. There is no evidence, to my knowledge, to support such a claim. Now, your question's a wee bit different because you've been told by a birder whom you trust that blue jays, eating peanuts in the shell, which they adore, by the way, can choke on that rather dry brown skin coating the peanut kernel because they have no salivary glands. In my 40 years of researching and responding to questions about feeding birds, I've never heard of a case of a blue jay or any other species of bird for that matter, having difficulty swallowing those brown peanut skins. And I know for a fact that birds do have salivary glands, just not an overabundance of them compared to mammals. It also varies among the different kinds of birds depending on their diet. For example, those birds that eat a lot of dry grains and seeds have more productive, more complex salivary glands than birds that eat small animals and fish. The saliva is used in the early part of digestion to break down carbohydrates and to moisten the food. If I still have not convinced your reputable birder friend, consider the fact that blue jays in particular are well known to consume loose mortar and paint flakes, presumably for the mineral benefits. Now, if that does not make a bird choke, I don't know what would. On this episode, let's dive into the captivating world of Eastern screech owls, small but mighty creatures of the night. So why the name screech owls? They make screech-like noises when defending their young in their nests, but their regular calls actually sound more like a horse's whinny. When I played their call on my computer, my dog just didn't know what to do with it. Check it out. Now, identifying these owls can be quite a hoot. They have two color variations, rufous and gray. These variations, which are called morphs, is what helps them blend in and camouflage themselves against tree bark. So often, you've probably walked past them and never even noticed them. Speaking of their size, they are rather small, only the size of a pint glass, but despite their small size, they are fierce predators, hunting anything from worms to small mammals and even other birds. And one last thing, their love life. These birds are quite monogamous and pairs form for many breeding seasons. They build their nests in tree cavities, but they're quite happy with man-made nesting boxes as well. So if you feel like playing matchmaker, put up a nesting box for them now to attract a breeding pair in the spring. And since their fledglings stay with them up to eight weeks, you'll have plenty of time to take cute family pictures of these owls. Well, I think our November pictures were actually a lot colder than the weather we've had this November. It's been so mild. Let's check out the top five. Here's the third place, the second place, and the grand prize winner. Congratulations, everybody. Well, December, our final contest of 2023 is bird-inspired art. Feel free to submit whatever you want as long as there is a bird in it. Good luck, everyone. Well, that's it. That's all for now. I can't wait to see all your bird art. Take care. I'll catch you in two weeks.